And I turn and look at Sister Director Andrea. I have to use the words of one of Spellman's founders, Harriet Giles. She said, Spellman women must have a loyal scorn for second best. Scorn. You know, I always love to ask you, we learn so much from you, but I know that you truly believe that mentoring is reciprocal. And I'd love to know what it is that you learned from Stacy. From Stacy, I learned maybe not the first time I learned it, but from Stacy, I I received repetitive reminders that you set that goal. You work collaboratively. And one day, there will be a victory. Stacy Abrams is one of six children born to Robert and Carolyn Abrams born in a little teenage town in Mississippi. But I tell you, there must have been something in the water they drank in that house. Because in addition to Stacy, her sister Janine, who has a PhD in epidemiology, is a vice president of Fair Fight. Stacy, as you may know, founded Fair Fight to fight voter suppression, but also to do something about the census being counted correctly so that marginalized people would be included. And so that's Janine. There's another sister who is a judge. There's another sister who has a PhD in anthropology and is one of my mentees. There are two brothers, one of whom has challenges that Stacy talks about openly, but listen to this family. Two preachers raising six amazing and grace-filled Black children. I'm so glad that someone just added Fair Fight to our chat. Thank you for your comments that are coming in. Thank you for adding more information because certainly we learned so much from Dr. Cole, but learning from Stacy's fight, her grit, all of these things, her commitment has, has just been um, inspirational and incredible, incredible model for the world. Well, you know, you think you're pulling something off tonight, but I'm going to stop right now <laughs> and let it be known that my extraordinary mentee, the good doctor, pulled something off on me. I honestly thought I was going to be asking her the questions. <laughs> Do you all see what just happened? <laughs> Whatever are you talking about? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but see? what I love about this is that it, it's just such a, a unique and beautiful example of what mentoring is supposed to be. If it only goes one way, if it's always that I'm saying what we're gonna do, I'm telling you what I think is best for you to do. I'm getting cheated. I think mentoring has got to be a relationship 
where the mentor and the mentee, first of all, have deep respect for each other. But secondly, that the mentor has the right to learn from the mentee. And there's a wonderful African proverb that captures this. It says, she who teaches must learn just as she who learns must teach. So I am thrilled to be in this situation where the mentee just took over and she is posing the question. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> uh -uh. I let it out. What can I say? Guilty as charged. <laughs> yep. 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 Um, so I wanted to spend some time talking about creativity. Now we all know that 20, 2020 was brutal on so many different levels. 2020 was nothing short of brutal. But last week, there were so many images of um, just profound gratitude. If you all were crying like I was when you saw almost, it was almost this, this unbelievably uncontrollable flood of emotions when we saw what happened last week. And creativity was at the center of it. Creativity, yes, there was politics, yes, there were, but there was so much creativity that was um, baked into, into this day. What is the role of creativity in these turbulent times? Oh, who if ever, if ever creativity had a role? It sure is now, it sure is now. As we as a nation are in the middle, not of one, not of two, but three pandemics. Of course, COVID-19, the economic fallout of this health crisis, and then the racial reckoning that we've got to keep at. And so creativity, in my view, is always important. But when times get tough, when you got to figure out how to, as Black folk would say, make do when don't wants to prevail, you gotta be creative. And one of the ways that I'm seeing this now is with this phrase that just sort of popped into my head one day when I was doing a talk. We will do better if we let go of uncertainty and grab a hold of creativity. We're being tested about that. We are. Sheltered in our homes, forced to wear masks, folk not having what they've usually had to make a dinner. This is creativity. <laughs> this is what black women have been doing since enslavement began. Make and do when don't wants to prevail. And then finally, Sister Director, I just gotta say about this young Shiro. She did not read her poem. She performed her poem as she drew on spoken word as she so so amazingly did not shy away from the challenges that we face, but found a way to lift up hope. 
So I have decided when I get grumpy or if I dare to lose hope, I'm going to pull out Amanda Gorman's poem and I'm going to perform it for my own bad self. You know, Dr. Cole, I really want to park on um, what you shared just a moment ago about uncertainty. And in addition to parking on uncertainty, I wanted to just, um, just thank you once again for the call that you made to me saying, I know this is an uncertain time. There were lots of personal things happening. It was an uncertain moment, but you just encouraged me to, um, to hear them out at the comer. You encouraged me to just hear what they have to say. I told you I wasn't sure, I was very uncertain. I was sharing with you that was the time right. There were so many things, so many reasons and roadblocks that I put up to say, I'm uncertain, this is an uncertain time. And I just wanna thank you for, um, for that type of encouragement. Mm -hmm. Who moves in a pandemic? Who talks to a, a search committee in the midst of a pandemic? Of course, as you know, I had been to the Comer to see the Augusta Savage show, which was stellar and that my family was um, welcomed there and had an extraordinary time. But I couldn't get past the uncertainty of th that moment that I was in. And so um, I've shared with, with, with Pam Paul and with the, 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 the search committee and the entire board I was minding my business. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about a move. I certainly wasn't thinking about moving in a pandemic, but you encouraged me to just hear them out, just have the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I laughed when Pam said earlier in the introduction that I interviewed them because I had to realize that part of the way through that I was so committed to figuring out what is it that they wanted as an institution. And you encouraged me after every call just to hear them out, continue to hear them out. But I asked them a series of difficult questions that were rooted in uncertainty. I asked them, how comfortable are you all with being uncomfortable? And it was Mari, who is actually um, the executive director of the Jesse, where those murals have been installed, who, who posed the question, what is it that um, we can say? What are you concerned with? What are your concerns with? And I, and I heard our, our playback, just hear them out, just hear them out. And every question that I threw at them, every reason that I could think that it wasn't a good time, they answered me with clarity and with a decisive role, explaining that not only is Jacksonville on the move, but the Cummer Museum of Art and Gardens is on the move. Mm, mm. They shared with me that there was a staff that you had met, a staff that you had spent time with, and that now was the time. So as we think about this, this matter of uncertainty, I want you to know that not only has creativity been sort of the foundation and the guide, but the many, many conversations that you and I have had about stepping out on faith and leaping out there. My family has obviously been an incredible rock. Friends from my class, I'm so glad to see friends from my class that are actually here. I know that Valencia Strather is here and Angela Glover is here. There's several, several people that are in this chat that even if I don't speak to them every day are part of, part of that bedrock. And to know that although I'm not on social media often, to know that there was this chatter that was happening about me coming to Jacksonville. I see that roll call. I see that roll call class of 1993 that just went up in the chat. And I am just so, so thrilled that um, not only am I in community with you tonight, but to be in community with them. Now you all know that I have an incredible passion and love for the Spelman College Museum of Fine Art and the incredible, incredible staff that's there. And Ann Collins Smith, and Makiba Dixon Hill, who are also Spelman alumni, but also Wyatt Phillips, who, who helps um, so many things happen. And they're, they're, they're right here, but this class of 93, these Spelman alumni who are so 
committed to um, creativity are truly, truly the bedrock and the foundation. So thank you for encouraging me in spite and in the midst of that type of uncertainty. Well, I do want to say publicly that this wasn't all about altruism because I get bragging rights. <laughs> I get bragging rights. Now I've had to kind of negotiate my relationship with Sister <laughs> President Mary Schmidt Campbell. That's right. <laughs> but you know, I know that she's also bursting with pride because you didn't leave Spellman. You can't leave Spellman. <laughs> Any Spellman woman never leave Spellman, but you did answer a call. And I'm so glad you did. I'm so glad that you mentioned Dr. Campbell, because, you know, one of the things that I thought about is how she actually made her journey to Spellman. Mm -hmm. She too was minding her business. She was finishing a book on Romare Bearden. She wasn't thinking about Spelman College. She okay. was minding her business too. And I love to read um, this incredible, um, it's, a, it's a profile that um, Celeste Watkins wrote about courting her, about mm -hmm. courting her. And as she was minding her business, they just ended up talking. They ended up talking about Bearden and the process of creativity and of writing and being an art historian and how was publishing going and it was very reminiscent of kind of how you wooed me to talk to the search committee I'm just saying the search committee and um, I, I just um, again think about all these incredible women who um, continue to give us wings and to, to allow us to take flight. You know I just want to say one more thing about where our conversation is at the moment. I, I do have hope that one day our country really is going to live up to its founding principles. And I think about Jacksonville, Florida, as I described it a little while ago, and now I think about Jacksonville, Florida, and you are the director of the Kummer Museum and Gardens. Not as much progress as any of us would want, but it's not to be ignored that change has come and I am just thrilled that in my lifetime, I could begin to see some of the change that we all deserve. I had a conversation today about, about the comer with um, Pam and with, with Carrie, who is um, the head of our advancement efforts and the head of our advancement team. And I tell you, you know, I started sharing with her that we use diversity right now. And I understand why we use diversity right now for all the reasons. But won't it be amazing when we no longer have to say, use terms like diverse communities because the comer is exemplifying that type of diversity. Mm -hmm. Won't it be amazing it's when a time when we don't have to spell out, you know, diversity, equity, inclu and inclusion because we are embodying diversity, equity, and inclusion, not to mention access. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I said, what an amazing time it will be when the Cumber Museum of Art and Gardens is a model, is a model for leadership. We also talked about the fact that, um, I, I pinch myself when I, when, I, when I talk about the following. There are only four black women museum directors that are leading mainstream museums. That statistic is alarming and humbling 
and all of those things. We've got work to do. And um, I continue to, to say that the Cumber Museum is, um, is an exceptional place. And the fact that they knew, that search committee knew that change had to happen and that it was mm -hmm. urgent, um, it just propels me in ways that are, are simply magical. Mm -hmm. So I was gonna ask you a question about the moment of inauguration day that stands out most to you. I know that for many of us, it was this one right here, but I can imagine there were many, but I would love it if you would share a bit about the moment that really, really compelled you most about inauguration day. There were two. Certainly the performance of our young Shiro when she performed her poem. And at this moment, I could, I, I, I simply couldn't control myself. I mean, I literally wept with joy, with joy. The first woman, the first black woman, the first woman of South Asian descent is in the second most powerful role in my country. Don't tell me change can't happen. I have lived long enough to see a black president and now a black vice president on her way, in my view, to being the first black woman president of the United States of America. Yeah, yeah. And of course, the fact that she is a graduate of a historically black university. And we at Spelman do forgive her for going to Howard <laughs> rather than coming to Spelman. But Look what this does now for all historically black colleges and universities. And I think that those of us who are Spelman women, by being alumni or by being so fortunate as I am to have a role there and to have had a role there, let's remember that while Spelman is number one on every index, the number one historically black college or university. But there are others that really are struggling. And I hope and pray that among the many things this new administration will do is to give attention to our HBCUs. It's such an important component of getting our nation where it needs to be. So, you know, with this group in particular tonight, I can't resist an opportunity to, to ask a question about how we can be the most helpful in terms of Spellman's evolution, propelling it forward, all of those things. What can this group and other alumni around the world, around the country do? What is the, what do we need to do to make certain that Spelman continues this forward, incredible forward momentum and remains number one on every index? Well, you know, for 10 years, ten years. I had the same message. And that is that Spelman women must love their college in so many ways. Love Spelman because it has given you a first class education. Love Spelman because your friends for a lifetime, you met there and you have friends who can finish your sentence. 
because you went through the Spellman experience together. But you gotta love Spellman so much that you also support her financially. And I am proud that among our HBCUs, Spellman women do give. I wanna speak though, if I may, very directly to my Spellman sisters about what I'm asking of you tonight. It won't surprise you, won't surprise you at all. I'm asking you to put on your to-do list, and I know it's a long one. It includes remembering to vote. Now that November 3rd is over, remember, keep looking out, what else do we need to vote for? On that to-do list is to make your contribution to these conversations about racism and other systems of inequality. On that to-do list is what are you doing in terms of service? But I've got something else to ask you to put on your list. Put on your to-do list that you are now an ambassador. No, Brother President Joe Biden didn't just appoint you to be the ambassador somewhere, but I am asking each Spellman sister to be an ambassador for the Comer, for the Comer Museum and Gardens, because without your work, our sister director will be less successful than I think she's ordained to be. You know how to do this. Even in the middle of a pandemic, you know how to get on the phone and start talking up the comer. And as things improve, you're going to be one of those ambassadors known to be on the way to the comma <laughs> on mighty regular basis. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to do the same. I've already appointed myself <laughs> as an ambassador for the Comma Museum of Art and Gardens. Thank you, Dr. Cole. You know that um, I've only been in, in the director chair there for in the seat for less than three and a half weeks. However, however, you know, between its mission to focus on art, education and gardens and the people, the board and the staff, I just couldn't be more excited about where we've landed. Ed is thrilled to be in Jacksonville. Isabella is just adjusting to being here away from the friends that she, she just was so wild and crazy about. But I, but I tell you, I just um, am, am, am so very, very delighted. And so thank you for stepping up to be our first ambassador within this group. And I see so many things in the, in the, in the chat but I just want to just point out to say that I just saw the one that said Miss Cicely Tyson just got her wings. May we give thanks for her incredible life. And um, oh. I, I wasn't prepared, prepared for that. But in, oh. in this moment, in this moment, I want to give thanks to her. Oh. I want to give thanks to the life and celebrate, celebrate her. I know so many of us know her from, from afar. And um, I, I just wanna know that, uh, I just want you all to know that resting in comfort, resting in peace and wishing her Godspeed in this forum is certainly in order, mm. certainly in order. Did not know that. So I am um, taken aback by that. Wanted to talk more. With Dr. Cole, I know that time always escapes us. Wanted to talk about Joe Gardner and the role 
of creativity and what we can all learn from this incredible main character. Perhaps in the interest of time, I'll just say that um, your role with Disney and with Pixar has been amazing. Would you share just a, 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 quick, a quick bit mm -hmm. about your role with this film and with Pixar? Well, I am catching my breath because yeah. She's gone to glory. Yeah. And I want to share that before she went to glory, our sister Cecily Tyson finished her memoir. And so I was just yesterday reading about that and figuring out how to support that and how we all need to buy that book and thinking about her and and she's gone to glory. Well, I can tell you that soul is a little bit about all of this as well. It's about kind of figuring out what your memoir is gonna say. Each of us needs to do that. And one of the things that Joe Gardner does, the lead character in this first ever full length animated film centered in black culture. Joe Gardner finally owned and embraced his passion. And that's what each of us must do. He started out as a band teacher in middle school and he dreamed, he dreamed of playing black improvisational music. And the story unfolds that indeed he does. Each of us has the right and the responsibility to own our passion and to always make sure that it includes doing for others. It was a great honor for me to be a principal consultant to that film. Now Spelman sisters, if you see the film, and I hope you do, don't leave before the credits. You got to stay, because the credits go on forever. But you will see my name there as a principal consultant. Yes, yes. It was brilliant. We enjoyed it as a family, and um, I, encourage everyone to see it. It was really, really incredible. And the storyline is amazing. The script was incredible. The music was was so fun. And the characters are are so well balanced and and and, and quite tremendous. So we can all learn something indeed, indeed from from, from Joe Gardner. We're going to talk a little bit more about um, mentors and mentees and I just couldn't resist an opportunity to show some of the incredible, incredible mentees and students um, at commencement last year. In the interest of time, I'll just tell you that they're all going on to study art history and or culture and or film. And this of course includes the incredible, incredible valedictorian from last year. I mean, just an amazing, amazing set of, of, of women, amazing group of women. And of course, this was um, us when we were at Crystal Bridges at a conference in, in Arkansas at the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art. And again, these are all students from Spelman and Morehouse that are, are studying and have gone on to graduate. So many things we could talk about in terms of what's happening now, in terms of art and art history and curatorial studies at Spelman. That'll be for our next chat. I'll save that for the next one. But I wanna just close in the interest of time in saying that I, I so regret that I could not get this video to play. But I just wanna share with you that, you know, when, when I saw this on, on Perry's feed, I'm gonna try one more time, on Perry's feed, it just warmed my heart. This is a 14 second video of Minnie just so smitten, <laughs> so, so, so smitten with Dr. Cole. You know, you can't come out of character. You can't come out of character when you work for Disney. 
But when I tell you, Minnie was so excited to see Dr. Cole, there was a debate going on if Minnie was from Spelman or if Minnie was from Bennett or, or where she was from, Emory or one of the many, many places. But um, I'll, I'll end there and just say that um, Minnie, like so many of us, are just profoundly, profoundly grateful for the way you pour into us the way you value mentoring and mentorship and you value your mentees. And you give us time so freely, so often. You give us support, not just because you're the, the first ambassador for the Comer Museum of Art and Gardens, but because you continually pour into us. It's been my great privilege to be in community and in conversation with you tonight. And I can't wait till we can do this in person in the very near future. Mm. Can you feel my virtual hug? I got it. Received. Received. And I just got one back. Received. Received. I hope you felt that as well. Mm. So, so to Pam, to Wanda, to Chantal, thank you so much for organizing this for Emily behind the scenes, who's been really making it happen. I look forward to welcoming you all to um, the Cumber Museum of Art and Gardens very, very soon, to seeing you at commencement at Spelman and or homecoming and or Founders Day. Um, we will continue to support Spelman from, from afar. And like Dr. Cole said earlier, you just can't leave Spelman. So um, thank you all for spending um, an hour with us tonight. I've enjoyed our fireside, fireside time together and um, to be continued. Thanks. Take good care. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>